This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education Education Meeting for September 29th, 2020. And please take note that the Board of Education of the Brighton Central School District, in response to the continuing emergency circumstances caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, and consistent with the New York State Governor's executive orders, will conduct its scheduled public meeting of September 29th, 2020 at 7 p.m. via Zoom in our Zoom webinar through the district website. We will offer the opportunity shortly for public comment. Any members of the public who have joined us uh, via the webinar side, if you will please go to the chat feature, put your name, your address, we will call on you uh, during the public comment period. And at that point in time, you'll have an opportunity to ask a question or make a statement to the board. In addition to that, members of the public are always welcome to contact the board directly via email, postal mail, telephone, all of our contact information is listed on the website. You're also welcome to contact Dr. McGowan directly, or if you're uncertain as to who might be the direct proper person to send your inquiry to and get an answer to your question, please direct any email or telephone questions or comment to our district clerk, Kim Lanzafame, and her contact information is also on the website. So at this point in time, we're happy to call the meeting to order, and I will ask Dr. McGowan if there's anyone signed up on chat who wishes to speak. And again, for those that may just be joining us from the public, if you wish to speak during this public comment opportunity, please enter your name on the chat feature and we will call on you. So. Dr. McGowan, do we have anybody signed up yet? Uh, no. Okay, so we have none this evening. Uh, so then I will ask the board, please, uh, for a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Second. Julene can take it. Moved by Larry, seconded by Julene. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, that's passed uh, seven in favor and none opposed. And I remind those who may be watching us, our agenda and all related material is posted on the district website under Board of Education agenda, uh, agendas and minutes. And you can find all the material uh, for this evening's uh, meeting at that site. Uh, may we please have a motion to approve the minutes from our September 15th, 2020 business meeting, please? So move. Second. Moved by Andrea and seconded by Karen. Does anyone have any corrections to those minutes or additions or deletions that they would like to offer at this point? Uh, hearing none, then all in favor, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Can I just make one uh, comment? Because I know this was part of the last meeting. Um, there was a uh, several public comments regarding uh, recent media stories and uh, litigation uh, that the district has been involved in relative to the Child Victims Act. And I just wanted to simply comment at this point that the uh, folks who had presented in public session at the last meeting had mentioned a petition that they had signed asking for the district to consider several actions. And that we've since the meeting received, since that meeting received that in hard copy and been able to review that request and uh, the materials and those who had signed and we'll be prepared at the next meeting to uh, provide a comment during public comment uh, with a response to the, the questions that were being asked. And I wanted to reference that as it had been part of those minutes as well. Thank you, Dr. McGowan, for that follow-up. And I apologize for not recognizing you. You had asked me about that earlier. And, and we will, as we've said to folks, in any, any public comment or public forum type operation, we certainly want to get back with information. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up. And we look forward to that further going down the road. Uh, the next item of business this evening is our, an update on our Brighton Facilities Improvement Plan project, and I'll turn us over at this point in time to Lou Alimo. Good evening. So I think Dr. McGowan actually has the video uh, tonight. We thought we would just um, have a picture say a thousand words. So I want to give uh, a special thanks to Eric Gruner for compiling uh, this uh, great presentation that you're about to see.
Wow. What a fantastic look, uh, Lou. Thanks. And thanks to Eric and everybody else who allowed, uh, you know, made that happen to, to give us that look inside. And what a fantastic, I mean, you can't, the Council Rock uh, new building, you know, the whole new classrooms, the new courtyard, it's just fantastic. But it's also a reminder of all the work that has been completed and that is underway all throughout the district. And we're looking forward to the board will be sometime this fall in small groups and appropriately masked. We're going to take a look uh, and take a tour and, and at the new construction, but uh, it's just fantastic. And it seems like forever um, to all of you that are in the buildings every day, it seems like longer than forever, but uh, it's great to see just beautiful, fantastic progress made. So, so thank and you. It's just a, a, like a snapshot of all the improvements to the instructional learning spaces that was part of this project. But there's so much that you can't see, you know, electrical system upgrades, plumbing system upgrades, HVAC upgrades. There's a lot of work inside the walls that's occurred too that are a prudent investment by the Board of Education to, um, to improve our facilities, all building systems. So a uh, special thank you to John Novelli, Rob Luce, our team at Campus Construction, our architect design teams. We were working up to the 11th and a half hour and uh, they were able to, to get things done, open up schools safely. And uh, I thanks to my, the principals as well for your work and your patience and leadership and making sure that everything was done for the opening of school to, uh, to welcome your kids back. So thank you to everybody, the entire team. Thanks. Thank thanks also to Lou for, for making that happen and to Larry Davis who's played a big role on those committees as well. Um, your leadership has been indispensable in that. So thank you very much for that. It's fantastic. Looking forward to showing you that firsthand because as Lou said, that's just a small piece of it. You know, we've really been hampered over the last few years and this was such a big lift. You know, we keep talking about that even financially from the 2017 approval. And before that, we really started the conversation prior to 2015. And for many of you, even far longer before than that. And have had this discussion over and over again for a long period of time around the revitalization of our buildings and creating spaces that were worthy of the instruction that's happening, the kids that are there, and kind of matches the level of excellence that we have everywhere else and our, our need to protect those assets. And without taking that next step and modernizing them, uh, they really were aging and aging quickly and it becomes more expensive longer term and not a healthier, safe environment either. So. When you, when you see it, when you see it now happening and you walk through it and you get to touch it and feel it and be a part of it, it is amazing what this community has supported, allowed us to do, paid for, and otherwise encouraged. It's, it's very, very special. So thanks to all of you for making that happen as well. Great work. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. And, uh, you know, you've mentioned it before, but I guess one of the very, very few positive aspects of our COVID time since March, but with you know, the extended period of time without people in buildings, it really allowed so much work to progress in certain areas that we didn't think would be at a certain point in time. So it, it has helped us in many ways from purely just a construction sure. standpoint. So, you know, we, we, you know, again, kudos to Lou and the entire team for being able to take advantage of a terrible situation to keep things moving along on that too. So, all right. So thanks to everybody. And we look forward to you know, further updates and completion of everything and, you know, moving on to the next thing down the well down the road, hopefully. So thank you. Got it. So speaking of those four buildings and, and our principals and their leadership uh, tonight, we're happy to have our first principal reports of the school year. And we'll start off with Council Rock and uh, Matt Tappan. So welcome and thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and hopefully my presentation. Um, so Lou took lots of my thunder because lots of the things I was going to show and bring up, but mine have kids in them. So they actually see uh, people um, enjoying the spaces. But many thanks to Lou and to the board for supporting the continued uh, progress and everything that's taking place. It truly is amazing to see it uh, at work and to see um, the spaces being used. So um, we have had a great start. Um, getting used to our new routines and procedures. Um, again, I want to just say how proud I am of our kids. Our kids are doing amazing. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of questions about how long could our youngest learners keep their masks on and could they follow those rules? Could they wash their hands? 
they absolutely can and they do better than some adults. Um, they are fantastic. They are listening. They are following directions, um, kind of switching gears when we need to switch gears as we realize something is working or not working. So um, just getting used to a lot of those new procedures. Um, Mrs. Jeffries and I are very proud of the staff as well, um, but it's all coming, coming together. So um, we've also been working hard as I know the rest of the district has in supporting our parents um, and families with the technology. So um, thanks to my Dr. Wiener and the entire IT department for offering those Zoom office hours for parents. Um, taking phone calls, our secretaries have become technology experts, um, or they've had to be, um, to help people get in the right Zooms and um, if they can't log in or take attendance. Um, and then this is actually Mrs. Jeffries just offering um, one of our PTSA parents one-on-one -on -one support so that then she could offer support out to other people. So just trying to get as much out there for, uh, for people. We recognize that it's new for a lot of us and that there will be glitches and we appreciate the continued patience. Um, so one of the things that's strange as you walk around um, Council Rock and I'm sure the other buildings is the sprinkling of remote classrooms. Um, and there aren't children actually physically there in those classrooms, but if you walk in, so um, the other thing we hadn't anticipated is that we need to have signs on our doors, all of us that say Zoom in progress or please come on in. So when you saw uh, Ms. Flanagan's door on the video that, uh, Lou shared, it said, come on in. And that was because she was not teaching remotely and could um, accept visitors. So um, many of our uh, rooms have remote teaching in progress. Please come back later. I know on my my door, I have a Zoom Zooming. Uh, please come back later just because people come in um, and don't realize that you're, if you're staring at your computer, that you're not just working. So some, some of the new protocols we have to put in place. But as you walk around, um, seeing those remote teachers getting in the groove, um, and as the principal, it's been, you know, just a challenge as to how do I get into those Zooms? Do I drop into the Zoom, you know, as a face on the Brady, Brady Bunch, or do I actually pop into the room? So I've been doing a mix of those things. Um, as I've talked to teachers, they felt like it was really important that kids recognize that they weren't working in a bubble by themselves, that there were other adults and people there. So I've been popping in and waving. It's been great to see our kids. Um, so you can see right here, this is Mrs. Bruce, and she's got her kids in front of her. She's got her, them up on her screen. And to just see the setups that they've done in terms of what they've done to set up their, um, their environments to make it successful for kids, it's been very, very exciting. Um, and the kids have been doing a great job along with the teachers uh, kind of coming to this new normal. Um, the other area that has had to probably make the biggest pivot and switch are our special areas, just because we have so um, few of them in terms of the instructors that they are all doing a blend of in-person and remote teaching. So they are kind of covering each other. Um, so I'm just going to highlight how each of them are kind of doing it. Um, phys ed is the only class that our students actually travel to. And you can see in here, Mrs. Cooper is doing a great job. She's got things taped out. The kids are very physically distanced um, just because they need more space um, when they're exercising. Um, so it's over 12 feet, um, but luckily we have the space. Um, and she's doing a fantastic job. Um, in art class, you can see Mrs. Jordan is on her cart. Um, so she's taking art on the road when she's not also presenting to the students who are at home doing their at-home learning. Um, she has a space, an art space studio that she can set up and do her videoing, um, but then she takes her cart on the road, um, much like the other specials. Uh, here's Mrs. Granat, who is our in-person music teacher. Um, the classroom teachers have had to figure out how to share their space and share their presentation boards, uh, whether it's a smart board or a Promethean board, so that the special area teachers can come and plug right in and then get right into the lessons so that no time is wasted. Um, but again, doing just a great job. And then library was probably um, one of the biggest challenges, just because uh, library comes not just with the class, but also with book checkout. Um, and Mrs. Motskovicius uh, has come up with her TA, Mrs. Saki. Great system. Uh, there's a traveling library where the kids get to choose. They check out right there in the classroom. But as you can see in the center, 
Um, if you remember, many of our kids um, would come back one or two times a week with their books and return them and get new books out. And that was something that we loved about our Council Rock Library. So they've set up extra bonus checkout times in different wings where teachers can send students one by one, socially distanced to get uh, their checked out or check out new books and return their books. All books are quarantined when they come back for three days, they have a quarantine spot and they have a whole system of how they're making sure that things are quarantining and then getting back on the shelves for recirculation. So here are those new spaces uh, in use. So our cafeteria, you saw a glimpse of it, um, but here it is in use. Lots of room. We have no more than four classes at a time in there. And remember our classes at a time are 12. Um, so no more than 48 students. Uh, again, the maximum capacity is about 800 if we were to uh, be COVID free and get kids in for um, like an assembly for our cafetorium. We're also taking advantage of the stage for now because we're not doing performances to have a class up on the stage to give us even further distance. The serving line is just so primary and lit up and beautiful and our cafeteria staff is just doing a fantastic job um, of utilizing the space, but also um, helping us get the kids fed and happy. So we're thankful for them as well. Our courtyard, just one of the highlights of uh, the work that's been done. It's just such a beautiful space. It is being utilized a lot for people to go out and take breaks, um, to get kids out and outside and moving while it's still nice. Um, so just great to be able to see that in use. And then uh, the new hallway in the back is just truly spectacular. The natural light that comes in, um, the high ceilings, it just feels like you're in a different world. So it's really exciting to see kids enjoying it and to see teachers enjoying it. And then we had our first ever uh, virtual curriculum night, like many of the other buildings. Um, we did a short, brief introduction video from Mrs. Jeffries and myself and all the special areas just did a quick introduction that similar kind of mimicked what we did in the uh, auditorium at the beginning of the night. And then all classroom sessions were via Zoom. Kindergarten was at 5.30, first grade was at 6.30, and second grade was at 7.30. Um, it was really neat to see. So you can see, again, walking around, I normally pop my head in and see all the families and parents, but I saw the backs of teachers' heads, much like uh, Mrs. Sayer in this, because they had their class, their families in front of them. It was very well attended um, and hopefully parents got lots of questions answered um, that they may have had um, about routines, about expectations, and then um, hopefully if there were any other questions that were available. Coming up, uh, so today we started with our uh, hybrid school pictures and on Thursday we will finish those up. So if your child didn't get their picture taken today because they weren't at school, they will have it taken on Thursday. Um, next Monday, our PTSA has our, starts our winter wear drive so that we can make sure we collect uh, that winter wear in time to get it out to people who need it. And then a reminder that Friday uh, the 9th is the superintendent's conference day and then no school on Monday. Any questions for me? Thank you, Matt. I mean, what a gorgeous, uh, you're right, adding the students and, and faculty into the spaces that we saw in the video, it just makes it all that much more uh, exciting and interesting and, and just the newness of the whole space and the way everybody has adapted. It's just incredible. So thank you very much for sharing. Absolutely. We appreciate that. And on to French Road and Dr. Rio, and I'm sure we'll see more of that. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So very similar to Matt, I was listening to him and thinking that we have a lot of things in common in our reports and also in the start of the school year. So also a great start to French Road. But before we started, we had our summer visits to all of our third grade French Road friends that were starting the school year with us. So we hadn't had a chance to meet them. We typically spend a lot of time preparing them for the transition to French Road. We do a movie night, we have visits to Fres, we visit Council Rock and feeling kind of at a loss for all of that this year, but we wanted to make it special for them. So Miss O'Neill and I drove to all 225 students' houses, stopped by very quickly, said hello, lots of smiles, great to see kids and even more special to see them when they came in on the first day and have already met them in person. The start of the school year was great. Kids were just like Mr. Tappan said, they were amazing. The kids were ready to come back, excited to come back, 
following all the protocol and just doing such a great job, teachers and kids alike, but really impressed with our kids and what they've been up to. We have some pictures from our remote learners on the first day of school, which definitely was interesting for us not to have them there in person, but being able to see them online was fantastic. And some of our hybrid learners on the first couple of days of school. We have some new friends photos in the main lobby that I had to showcase here because we don't have any visitors in our school. So nobody gets to see them except our kids and our faculty. So thanks to the Brighton Education Fund for sponsoring these for us, but trying to create a more welcoming environment when everyone walks in the school building. And these have been really great to see every morning when we come into the school. Lots of different things happening around the building. Again, similar to Mr. Tappan, we have our stage, which has turned into also more cafeteria seating, but the kids just went right with it. Nobody thinks twice about it. They're enjoying lunch. It's great to see them together. It's very, very quiet in the cafetorium, which is quite unusual. And um, we have a lot of kids in there, but they're safe. They're spread out. They're eating. They're happy. We have classes outside. We have, um, kids being able to come outside. We've painted stars around the building. You can't see them in this picture on the right, but in different spots around the building, we've painted stars six feet apart. So classes, classes can come outside and enjoy some time learning with their masks off. And here is a great example of Mrs. Cole and Mrs. Anderson, our music teachers at French Road, have been bringing the classes outside whenever they can to engage in some singing and dancing. It's been awesome. It's been great to hear them and participate with them along with their dancing. And um, the kids have really enjoyed that. So taking advantage of the outdoors for now. Some of our remote learners have been participating in some time to get to know each other. So here's an example of a socially distant lunch hour that Mrs. Tufts, one of our third grade remote teachers, did with her class just during their regular scheduled lunchtime. She had them meet up at Buckland Park, and if anyone wanted to go, they just sat six feet apart with their families and had a chance to see their teacher in person and see each other in person before going back home to finish up their day of school. It's funny because you'll see lots of things like this now around Front Row. This is just an example of me behind the mask where we're taking advantage of just using this as a teaching opportunity for kids. And they love still talking about themselves, sharing about themselves, even though they have a mask on and we can't see their beautiful smiles all day long. And again, here is Ms. Giordano at Curriculum Night. Looks very similar to Mr. Tappan's Curriculum Night. It was very strange to walk around the building and just see teachers interacting with families on the computer but it was pretty great too, to still be able to have that opportunity. Last week we had uh, third grade and fifth grade and tomorrow night we have our fourth grade curriculum night. So teachers have been doing wonderful and the families have been joining us and connecting and even offers more of an opportunity for some people who may not have been able to be in person with us. So that's been great too. This year, some of the work that I wanted to share that's starting off our year is including some um, lessons from teaching tolerance in our typical second step lessons that our mental health team does with our classroom. So typically our mental health professionals push in to do second step lessons in each of the homerooms, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And those are social emotional lessons. And some of the examples are here, problem solving, friendship, bullying, empathy for each other. And this year we've included some other lessons from teaching tolerance that will be led by our mental health team alongside our classroom teachers. And I listed a few examples of things that our kids will be working with this year and learning more about. And I'll be happy to share more of that once we get rolling with that. And um, we're really excited, our teachers and our mental health team and our kids too, to incorporate these lessons in this year. We've also started showcasing different Brighton believers from every single room in the whole school every month. So we're hoping to just highlight all the great things that our kids are doing this year and how they use their star qualities around the building. And every month we'll highlight a different star quality and look for kids who are exhibiting those across the whole building, not just at one time during the year. Um, so we're excited about that. And we'll start just this week with our first crew. Again, visits to some of our remote learners. So again, teachers being present in the building, you can pop into their classroom, stand behind them, wave hello, like Miss Maz over here. Or sometimes I get on the computer with Mr. Bozik's class here to just jump in their Zoom too to see what's going on. But it's been really interesting and exciting to see the kids in different ways and learn along with them. Miss Maz in this picture here is doing a classroom circle on 
Zoom, which was really interesting. So they tried to follow the circle format that we've been using at French Road and across the district. And that worked really well for her kids, even remotely, which was exciting to watch. And then upcoming events at Fres, as I mentioned, we have our fourth grade curriculum night Zooms. Tomorrow night, we have a PTSA meeting on the 6th and then no school for superintendents conference day in Columbus day. And we do have an extended studies parent meeting Zoom on the 15th coming up. And our quote that we just put on our board this week, just to keep everyone thinking and knowing that this isn't going to last, but we can all do it together. So any questions for friends? What a great message there, Allison, too. And again, you know, just like with Matt and Council Rock, and I'm sure we'll see it at the next two buildings, is letting our children lead us. I mean, you know, you, they're figuring it out, and all of our folks are figuring it out with them. And it's just really, really a joy to see. I, I can't tell you, I, I'm sure if I ask the other six board members, what do we need principal reports tonight? I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen positivity with staff and kids and leadership and everybody working together. So thank you again. And, uh, and it's a great pleasure to welcome tonight our, for his first principal report. If it was, you know, goofier times, Jim, I would have thrown you under the bus and called you at the very beginning out of order and saw the other three all scramble and laugh. But we're not doing that tonight. We're going to call in order. So Jim Nunez, our principal at uh, TCMS, and welcome again. But thank you very much. And let's hear about the middle school. Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you, everyone, for having me. I probably would have liked if you've done that because then it would have been over with by now. So that probably <laughs> would not have been a bad bar, idea. and then everybody else would have had to match. So that's that's right. So now I'm looking at everyone else is wondering, wow, I forgot to add all these other pieces into mine. So now I feel like the first year principal here, but it's all right. We'll go with it. <laughs> all right. So I'll share my screen. Well, here we go with that. All right. So I would have to echo the sentiments of all my colleagues that have been shared so far that our beginning of the year has been outstanding. And for me coming into it as a new leader, um, highly um, worried and concerned about how this um, would have opened up. But once we got rolling and open, we're very happy with the outcome and very pleased to see how everything unfolded. So we were very pleased with that. Um, we opened up our school year as well with a, our sixth grade new student orientation um, and our device distribution that took place. We had our TCMS strong students who were guides um, for our new sixth graders. Um, and with that, it was our first real um, opportunity to have students in the building. So we we're quite cautious with how we um, rolled that group out. We had broken all of our students into four smaller groups within individualized sections to make for smaller numbers and, add, and um, provide socially distanced opportunities. Our counselors did a wonderful job of introducing them to what to expect at TCMS. And like I said, our, our TCMS strong leaders did a real wonderful job of guiding them through the building, showing them um, where, how to navigate their way as I am still learning my way to navigate my way around the building. Um, but it was very nice to have everyone there. Device distribution went well. Um, all the sixth graders um, were able to get um, those loan devices in as eighth graders were getting their devices in for their own um, use as well. As I mentioned, our opening was fantastic. Um, arrival and dismissal has gone very well. Arrival went far smoother than anticipated. We had a great um, showing of support from our Brighton Police Department, which was greatly appreciated. Um, but volume was down. Um, everyone was able to come in smoothly. Um, students once in the building were um, separated by grade level areas, all socially distanced um, and masked. And it, it couldn't have gone any better. They adjusted quickly. They've gone to their um, set, um, designated areas and have adjusted quite well before moving on to homeroom. Teachers and all um, receiving appropriate PPE to, to really accommodate their needs. And everything has been quite a success so far. Massing, as we mentioned, students have done a really great job with it, really no concerns whatsoever. They just adjusted well, wear their masks, they get to where they are. And um, 
the cafeteria as well. We are all socially distanced, sitting at desks apart, but it hasn't in any way precluded them from engaging with their friends and socializing that time um, that they are. Um, and it's been nice, you know, for me personally, as I get a chance to meet our students down during those times, I happened to, last week, I happened to sit down at a desk near a group of students and I was uh, having a snack with them. And as I took my mask off, I saw this look of disbelief on some of the students' faces. And I wondered why they were looking that when they said, well, we've never seen your face before, Mr. Nunez. So it was kind of weird how this whole masking component has really added a different layer to our interactions with students and the being able to identify ourselves by eyes. But it was great to see that, um, that reaction from them. Our library has been noted before. We have great updates to our library. Our circulation desk um, is brand new, new colors on the wall, new furniture. It's been opened up. It's just unfortunate that our students are able to really capitalize on the improvements at this point. But I know that uh, Mrs. Lambert has been a, doing a great job with providing curbside service to our students for um, library books, if desired, by our remote learners and our hybrid learners as well. So if students are to put in orders um, via online, on Monday or Tuesday, then their curbside pickups will be available for them on Thursday. And that's been a service that's been highly uh, utilized by our students and families and a way to keep our students um, engaged in literacy and reading. And so some areas for us to work, um, focus on, um, you know, a big goal of mine is culture building in the building as we look to establish relationships. Our team has done a really nice job. We're currently in the process of creating a behavioral matrix for our students where our teachers will um, use this language um, on a daily basis to focus in on expected behaviors from our students, all centered around our five bright and believed traits. Um, daily communication goes out to our staff with updates and notes of positivity. We have started to include birthday shout outs to our teachers uh, via our morning show, along with creating um, recognitions for our students and staff on a monthly basis. Um, we're continuing to refine our, our, our work around the hybrid and remote learning. And one of our other big goals for the year is looking at our scheduling process. I think this summer, this um, our COVID pandemic has really highlighted a need to create a bigger team um, in the scheduling process to, to, to provide a, a smoother transition from one year to the next with that process. And um, so we're in the process of looking at that. Uh, but so far, as noted, our school year is off um, to a great start. And as Maddox here shows, or thumbs up to the start of the year and to the rest of the school year as we go along. So any questions for me? It looks great, uh, Jim. Thank you very much. And again, uh, the look inside the school and, you know, you hit it. I mean, the masking thing, people that we interact with. And if you meet anybody new since March, they, you know, they only know what each we only know each other with masks and that inability to, to see the smile and see whatever it is else there. So yeah, that's, that's pretty funny that they, plus they're all keeping an eye on you anyway, also, I'm sure. So that's true. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for the great start. We, we appreciate it. So thank you. And then on to uh, Brighton high school and uh, Dr. Hall. All right. Hello and good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Tom. Okay, thanks. And we all know what you look like, Tom, and all your students do too. So, no mask issue there. I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with no goatee once, and then see if they recognize me. <laughs> um, yes, glad to be back. Uh, my three colleagues. We've been uh, talking all summer, working together. I couldn't ask for a better uh, um, team of principals to work within the other buildings and they've done a phenomenal job and very similar things to share with you. Um, this was just a picture. If you didn't see our stage, you know, this is our graduation stage for the class of 2020 back in um, July, or I'm sorry, June and August. And we have a little tiny moon up there that was a beautiful picture captured in front of the building. The one thing about the class of 2020 graduation that I just did, you know, this is one picture. If you weren't there, we actually had a dog come up with us on stage and, you know, I love dogs and I just thought that was phenomenal. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to continue that tradition, Dr. McGowan into the future. So we'll see, <laughs> but it was great to have so many people and animals at our ceremonies. I wish the class of 2020 all the best. So we are back to school and uh, one of the, some of the big things, Stella mentioned several things uh, two weeks ago during our meeting 
Uh, we've been wor working on um, four main things. We started the year, lots of, uh, lots of reviews. You've heard these since March. Um, your masks, your social distancing, washing the hands, sanitizing, coughing and sneezing in your crook of your elbow and into your mask. Um, like the, the, what you need to know starting um, school in a pandemic. Um, here in our cafeteria, we have tables that are three per table and we've isolated everybody around. Um, we have red X's now. We've had to step that up uh, after the first couple of weeks. We've uh, um, been able to make things better in the cafeteria, trying to keep people wanting to socialize, but doing it in a safe way. And when students enter the building, we have two of these um, temperature scanners and they are wonderful. Uh, we get kids in, you know, one, two second per kid. They're in the building and it gives us a very accurate read. Um, and just want to thank Lou for getting those for us. But we have a couple out in the main entrance and things run really well. But that's just the new normal coming into the building. During our flex time, which we were most nervous about, that's why we created a flex A and a flex B. So we could take half of the kids we have and cut that into another half. And right now the weather's been gorgeous. We've had kids sitting outside, you know, this group eating on the tennis courts, doing everything they need to do. We have kids in the gym, the cafeteria, uh, with mass breaks or eating breaks or outside. Here's what the gym looks like. It looks like it's set up for a big exam, um, but there's about 190 desks in there, uh, more than six feet apart, uh, the way that it's spaced out. And we have students meeting there in the morning, waiting for the bells to ring, and then they go there during lunch. I'm sure it will be much more uh, busy over the next few weeks as the weather gets uh, worse, but we're still hoping for some good weather um, right through the end of October. Um, we started our transfer process again this year. All students are assigned to our Brighton Support Center as a brand new student. And every BST member, teachers, administrators, counselors are assigned a mentor to anywhere from one to four new students. We had 40 new entrants this year. Uh, they'll get two to three one-on-one -on -one meetings with their mentors in the fall and spring. And then we make two to three phone calls home. Continuing that, started that about three years ago. Uh, has some phenomenal kids coming to us from all over the world. Our culture climate leadership team um, made up of all of these different clubs. We have faculty, staff, PTSA, um, and any other interested students in grades nine through 12, but from very specific clubs, we'll be meeting, meeting and kicking off some uh, intense conversations about um, the politics of the day and things that occurred over the summer um, and, and a lot of discussions about diversity, race, uh, culturally responsive teaching um, and tolerance, um, as well as many other things when it comes to culture and climate of the building. So Eric in the video shared our front board sign. So these are when they're off. And Allison, I do not miss that big sign board out in French Road. I used to put those in it myself, even when it was in front of the high school, probably back in the late 90s when it used to belong at the high school. And uh, it certainly served its purpose and time. But I'll tell you, having these digital messages, I can plug in a message and it's up there in 20 seconds or less as soon as I push return. So I'm sure you're, you're agonizing over that, Allison. And I've got two boards to, to spread the message. So we're actually collecting positive quotes from kids and from parents and students, I'm sorry, from faculty. And we'll be putting those on a sign board intermixed with all of the other information and updates we have. We have some training coming up on that uh, next week. Um, oops. This was something we started in culture climate leadership team. We wanted to get some other uh, artwork around the building that promotes our diversity of the building and, and for all students to feel welcome at the high school, seeing themselves as they walk through the high school. And this is just one of our first art exhibits done by two students, one a graduate, one a, um, a current junior. And this is Maya Angelo. This is before the words were put on the page. And now the words have been painted, beautiful flowers, a dove and Maya Angelo just speaking one of her best quotes ever. And that's hanging right up in the main entrance. We had our virtual open house as well on the 22nd. Um, couldn't get around and take pictures because we were pretty much like a, uh, a telephone hotline the first uh, few few times of the, the few, first few periods. And then, you know, occasionally we had more calls coming in, but we handled it. 10 minute periods, five minute passing time. And each teacher had a Zoom link. It worked very well. I uh, had a lot of parents who were out of town on business or travel. And they were thankful that they could actually zoom in and see uh, their meet with their child's teacher. Um, went fairly positive. It was very good uh, uh, 
very good night. PSAT for all juniors, we're still offering that on October 14th, sent out signups. Um, all students will be excused for classes on that day. Fall sports, our varsity sports started up today. Soccer, cross country, girls and boys, girls swimming and diving, girls tennis and field hockey. Still in question is the winter season and what that might look like. Some of your typical winter sports, not sure of the time frame yet or the exact sports. Oops. And then we have fall two, which is boys and girls volleyball and football, tentatively starting in March and April. And then spring, our regular spring sports. So more to come on that. A lot of things we're focusing on this year um, within the school. Of course, our hybrid schooling and remote schooling and staying connected with kids, one, two of our main priorities, CCLT, the Blueprint Initiatives, and revamping our support center. And a lot of principals point out all the other days off, but let me see. So our ninth grade link crew, so our remote students um, will be having an evening or an afternoon and then sometimes evening link crew sessions with all of our remote ninth graders. Uh, we start up our first one on October 6th and that's it. Any questions? Thanks again, Tom. And, uh, you know, the message board looks fantastic. You know, when you drive by there and you see that now fully lit up and all we had to do was put that gazillion dollar transformer in there and build a whole building around it and we're all set, right? But uh, thank you to RG&E &E and everybody else involved in that. But uh, it does look fantastic over there. And, and the thing about it is you can, be, with the two-sided, you can read it, you know, I yeah. think that's what you're doing. And so that, that's a great benefit. So um, I guess one comment I want to make, and, and I, I think that what the four of you have shown in your reports this evening, and what we want to do is we want to make sure we encourage folks to watch the meeting remote, uh, you know, after, uh, after it's been posted to the YouTube channel and take a look through the reports. And what, what you're showing the community is that we can do this. We are doing this. Kids are leading. I said that earlier, but, but our building leadership, our teachers, entire staff, you know, the, the words about adaptability and innovation, ingenuity is thrown around a lot lately since we began things again uh, in the summer. Um, the connection of remote learners and hybrid learners and making sure that you are connecting to every child and every family and everyone's a part of this uh, moving forward because we all know it's a day-to-day, -day, a week-to-week. -week. We don't know how things are going to play out day-to-day -day and month-to-month -month and how, where we're going to be in the spring. We, we, we we may be in the same situation that we are in right now. But I think on behalf of the board, our sincere thank you to everybody to continue the continuing effort to making this work. And it's not perfect. It's not like it was. It never will be like it was, but it's new and different. And kids are learning and teachers are interacting and bonds are being created. And every day you're figuring out in your buildings and teachers are figuring out in their classrooms new ways to try to make it work. And it's just tremendous and fantastic. And I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about watching this play out for as long as we have to do it, because then at the other end of it, we've got so much more in the toolbox, right? And so much more that we've, we've proven can work and we have experience working. And, you know, Tom, you mentioned the first 10 minutes uh, of a Zoom open house on the telephone, figuring out where's the link and you resend. Can, I mean, we've all been through that and we live it, but we move on from it and it's making it so much easier in some ways. I can tell you not one parent has complained to me about parking at French road for open house or curriculum night. So, you know, it's just fantastic to see. And we know we have great people and we know we have the ability to do it. And now we're seeing it. So I wanted to make sure I expressed that. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. McGowan, you don't have a principal or a superintendent report section tonight, but is there anything that, you wanted to add either on what we've seen from the buildings or anything additional this evening? I think the four principals said it all. I think your compliments are very much appreciated, but also very reflective of how we feel about the work that's been done. You know, we have ballpark 600 staff members and under the leadership of the people on the screen, they've reinvented everything we do from how we get kids to school, how we get them in the building, how we assess their health, how we feed them, how we go outside, how we come and go, how we communicate, how we engage. The thing that hasn't changed is the relationship 
that they are trying to forge with each and every child and meeting their needs. And we've discovered a lot about how we're moving from three dimensions to one and how there's so much that is continues to be similar in terms of what we do to connect and how we create good instruction and meaningful objectives and, and develop fun, meaningful activities that meet those objectives. But it's a very different way of thinking about the work and a lot of um, thought and passion and energy has gone into that. And again, I think you've described it and thanked it well, and I appreciate their work too. Um, I think that so many people have contributed to it. Our teachers who are not on screen, although represented well by an outstanding one in Nicole, our parents represented by Eleanor who have been so patient and thoughtful and provided feedback and Stella represents our kids who at the end of the day have made it work and they make it work each day and they've been super patient with it and they're making it happen. So yes, thank you very much for all the leadership on the screen that's made this happen and Deanna Spagnuolo is here too. Um, and, and for everybody who is making this work, it really is going very well and we appreciate that. So thank you for pointing that out. We'll keep making adjustments as I talked to the board earlier today about, we'll be reaching out to families to do some assessment of our work too in October towards the end of the month and get feedback from them and make course adjustments from there as we have from the beginning of this conversation. And we want that feedback and we wanna still be open and vulnerable to the places that where we need to be better and learn from what we can do within the restrictions we have. There's adjustments we can make and we'll still try and continue to do that and grow and learn as, as we move along. To your point too, there's so much that has gone really well that we can learn from long-term. And I'm really curious as we think about the things we have learned about leveraging technology differently and thinking differently about some of our systems, it'll be fascinating to see as we come back, when we come back, which can't happen soon enough, I know everybody would agree, what can we do differently based on the things that we've learned and how can we uh, better provide service to our families uh, utilizing the lessons that we've learned. So thanks very much for that and thanks to them for the reports. I'm glad the community could see what we see every day, which is some really incredible work. Fantastic, thank you, Kevin, very well said. Uh, our next item of business this evening, folks, is uh, we have a second read of a policy. Um, could we have a motion to approve second read of policy 4241 under district operations covering uh, during the return to work and in-person instruction under COVID-19 pandemic? So moved. Second. Karen, uh, a motion by Karen, a second by Christina. Uh, you'll recall, board, that uh, we had, this is a new policy. Um, essentially, it's not based on any new law or regulation, but it, it's designed to reflect best practices and consolidate and make reference to those practices under the COVID-19 pandemic operation. So we approve the first read. We have nothing additional to add or delete or change. Um, does anyone have any further discussion on it as a second read? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That motion is carried seven in favor, none opposed, and now uh, will become official policy of the district. The consent agenda this evening, a motion please to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Larry, seconded by Andrea, or was it Julene? Uh, Andrea. Andrea, second by Andrea. Uh, the consent agenda includes one gift this evening that I want to make note of, a gift from Charles Hale and Dorothy, Dorothy, Dorothy Stansel to the Visual and Performing Arts Department of 20 clarinets, six trumpets, two cellos, a saxophone, and a trombone. Wow. And all I will say to you is, I don't know if any of you know Charlie and Dorothy, goes by Dot. I, don't, I know of them. I don't know them personally. I know of them through a friend of ours that's involved at Eastman School in RPO. They're unbelievable individuals. Google them. Charlie, they buy and acquire instruments, repair them, bring them up to snuff, and donate them. And I, the last I had heard, they've donated almost 1,000 instruments, mostly to RP, uh, RCSD, but all over the area. And they're really incredible people just from what I know of them. So anyway, we appreciate their gift to the district, and it's, it's quite an incredible gift. So... We thank them I'm for that. So glad you explained that though, because I was really wondering where does someone get 20 clarinets? Yeah. It, there it's just it, quite an incredible story. I only know a little bit about it, but uh he uh 
Charlie's, I, from what I know, he's in his mid or, or late seventies and has been doing this for years and buys and acquires and fixes and then they donate them. And it's just, it's just incredible, incredible story. So yeah, they're interesting. I understand they're very interesting individuals. So yeah, when I saw that, I said, wait a minute, I remember, is this, and I double checked and it, it is, that's the story. So, because the first thing I said, Karen, was that many instruments. I mean, we all have two or three left behind from our kids. And if they tried one or two, maybe you got a couple extra, but to donate that many at one time, right? All in favor of the consent agenda, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That motion is carried uh, seven in favor and none opposed. Uh, members of the Board of Education, any other items of business this evening or anything else that we need to make sure we cover? Dr. McGowan, anything else this evening? I don't know. Everyone's in a rush to get to the debate, I'm sure. Um, so then with that note, we next meet on October 13th. I can't believe we're into October already, but we are. October 13th, we next meet. Uh, as we've mentioned previously, we will continue to meet via Zoom uh, remotely for the foreseeable future, and we'll keep the public uh, apprised of that. So then I will entertain a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. So moved by, I believe it was Julian and Sue. It was Sue. Was it Sue? Okay. Yeah. Second by Karen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seven in favor, none opposed, and we are adjourned, everyone. Thank you very much. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.